The rook was able to travel from e3 to c3 to c6 to g6 and is threatening check on g8 and taking the pawn on g5. We're going to find out how this variation happened in the game between Carlsen against Nakamura in the final. First up, let's start with the table. This is day four and Carlsen ended up winning one game. They played four rapid games, 15 minutes each on the clock and he won the day, two and a half, one and a half. Let's check out one of these games now. Carlsen has white, Nakamura has black. The game began. C4, E5, G3, Knight F6, Bishop G2, D5. We have the English. Black strikes early in the center. Take, take, Knight F3, Knight C6, Castle. And here, Black plays Knight B6, which might look a bit weird. Moving the Knight away from the center, but it's important to stop White playing D4 straight away. Another line, which is a little bit uncomfortable at the moment for Black, is Bishop E7. White now strikes with d4, e4, knight e5, and f5. Defending your central pawn and after take, take, a high level game in this variation was Ding Li Ren against Yan Nepomniachi. I'll include a link in the top right corner to Ding Li Ren's white repertoire. Black moves the knight away from the center and Carlsen goes b3 after bishop e6, bishop b2. We have a double fianchetto, bishops on b2 and g2. F6, defend your center, and knight c3. You can strike in the center with d4, but maybe black has e4. And after knight e1, f5, shutting out the bishop on g2 for now. White will break up the structure. This bishop isn't great at the moment. So this is one way to play. However, Carlsen went knight c3, queen d7, and now queen c1. Cool move. Just sidestepping giving white the chance to play rook d1 and then d4, or maybe even d4 straight away. Nakamura thought this was so dangerous, he played knight d4 himself to stop Carlsen playing d4. There is a way to counter this, which is a very weird move, bishop b4. After d4, no need to prepare it with rook d1, let's just strike. You can take the knight on c3. Just volunteer to give up the bishop pair. This looks so weird. But why do this? Because after take, now you go e4. Now after knight d2, f5. Maybe black's doing well here. This bishop isn't great because it's got a pawn blocking himself. Castle, a knight can sit very well on d5 and black has a good game. Now Kamura plays knight d4. Carlson gets rid of it. Take, take, and knight e4. Just like in previous English games in this match, Hikaru likes to castle queenside. So that's what he did. But White's attack looks so fast and Carlsen begins with a4. d3. You don't want to play a5. General rule, it's a bad idea to move pawns in front of your king. Just creating weaknesses. Knight c5, take, take. And looks like the a5 pawn is going to drop. So a4. Nakamura pushes another pawn. d3. a5. Kicking the knight. 2d5 and knight c5. No need to deal with the black pawn on d3 yet. Carlsen attacks the queen and the bishop. Take, take and king b8. Defending a7. You could play d takes e2 but then rook e1 maybe you're getting white's rook in the game. So king b8 and let's point a bishop towards the king as well. Bishop d4, cool move. b6 got to block this diagonal and then a takes b6. Carlsen mentioned this was a very poor move. Better was queen a3 just to keep the tension because white is now threatening to open the a-file. Queen e7, you want to trade queens, but white says no, queen a4. Queen d7, you want to trade queens, white says no. He plays taking on b6 first. Take on b6, take back, and then e3, and then white is much better here. Both bishops are facing the king. You don't want to swap off queens now because you take with a pawn. And now this can open up the king. But Carlsen took first. Take back. Now queen a3. Is there a difference? Yes. Nakamura now has a defensive resource which Carlsen missed. Taking on e2. Rook e1 just like before but now rook c8. 
Are you enjoying the video so far? Then why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Make sure you hit that bell, then YouTube will let you know when I release a new video. Now back to the game. Black's rooks can defend using the C file, rook takes E2, rook C7. This is the key move. Using the rook, the queen is already here, defending the A7 point. Rook E1, bishop H3. Blunder by Nakamura. So pause the video, can you find a tactic for white? I'll give you five seconds. The move that crashes through is bishop takes b6. Knight takes b6 was played, but let's have a look what happens if ab6, because is the queen coming in here? Yes, indirectly, we're going to use rook e7 as a tactic. You can't play knight e7, because queen a8 is mate. After rook e7, if queen d8, white can switch back to the a file with rook a1. Mate on a8, you can't stop it. Bishop takes b6, knight takes b6 played, and now rook e7. Queen takes d2, bishop takes h3. Rook d8, the engine says y is winning, but what is the winning plan? I saw this position in the commentary, but how to continue? Queen a6. Carlson is telling Nakamura, I plan to checkmate you on b7. I'm going to bring my bishop back to g2. And this diagonal is so strong. Let's get rid of a pair of rooks. Rook takes e7, take, queen d1 check. Good move, forcing the bishop back to f1. So, the bishop can't go to g2 yet. Rook e8 check, rook d8, rook e3. Keeping the rooks on because black's king is weaker. h5, kingside attack, why not? h4, let's stop that. Even h3 is possible, which Carlson mentioned. Very similar to the other line we're going to show. So let's just go back to the game. h4, g5, and now he took. Maybe in the game, Carlsen didn't really want to play this pawn capture. But h4, g5, there's a brilliant move here. And it's all about trying to get the bishop on f1 into the game. How can we get the bishop to g2? I'll give you five seconds. You can't move the bishop at the moment, but you can move the king. King h2. Let's have a look at g takes h4 first. Bishop g2, winning. Threatening mate on b7. Now if you stop it with queen d7, there's now a brilliant deflection move. Because the queen is defending the b7 square, so now you use the rook to attack the queen. And by attack, I mean you deflect it. So, the brilliant move is rook d3, and that is game over. Black cannot take it, or else it will be mate. But if black moves the queen out of the way, white is going to take the rook. So, for example, this, check, take, mate. So, after king h2, the best line is just moving the queen back, because you need to defend a b7 square. Bishop g2, queen c7. Take, take, and now rook c3. Here we go. We saw this position at the beginning of the video. It was the thumbnail to this video. Rook c3, you can't take the rook. Rook c6, threatening rook takes b6, check. So black plays rook d7 to defend along the 7th rank. Now rook g6, threatening the pawn and playing rook g8, check. So I love this beautiful geometry where white has managed to go from e3 to c3 to c6 to g6, now attacking the g5 pawn and the g8 square. Beautiful. So rook d8 stops that, and now rook takes g5. This is the problem. It's all about deflection. We can't take because we have mate here. You may be asking after rook c6, why did black play rook d7? Well, let's say black plays h4. Where's the mate? There isn't a mate, but there is... A lot of simplifying. Rook takes b6 check, take, take, check, and that's it. King c8, only move, and bishop h3 check. Everything is coming off. This is mate, except for the fact that black can block with the rook, but then check. King moves, and then everything comes off. Here, black can throw in a check with take, but white's king is so close. Take, king d7, king g4. This pawn is going to drop, white is going to be two pawns up. Amazing variation.
now back to the game. H takes g5 played, take. Rook e7, threatening mate. Rook d7, rook e5, let's keep it. Rook d5, check. Rook d8, queen b5, h4. Queen e5, check, king c8. Notice here, this bishop can't move. If it could, it would be mate. Bishop h3 or bishop a6. But the queen is still on the back, pinning the bishop to the king. Rook e6, h takes g3, rook c6, check. It just looks so dangerous. King b7, queen c7, check, king a8. This rook is still guarded by the queen. There are no good checks now from either rook or queen. Queen takes g3, knight into the game, d5, and now queen takes g5. A cool try was queen g2, because if black plays knight f4, then there's rook c8, Double checkmate, which is always very nice. However, Carlson took the pawn, queen takes g5, but still knight f4, a brilliant resource by Nakamura. Temporarily sacrificing the knight. What a defensive move. The threat is if you don't take it, knight h3 is check winning the queen because this queen is pinning the bishop to the king. So Carlson took the knight, rook g8 check, the king has to move, and queen takes bishop queen f3 white is one check away from victory but then so is black king b8 played notice you don't want to play rook h8 check which looks like it might be winning because now white plays rook h6 discovered check from the queen once the king moves then white will take your rook oops such an easy trick to fall for if it was a blitz game so king b8 check king a8 Queen f3, king b8, rook h6, queen g1 check, king h3, queen f1 check, king h4. Even this looks pretty dangerous, but then Carlsen has the h1 squared covered. There are no good checks here. Queen back to g1, threatening queen h2 now, or queen g5 as well. Queen f4 check, king a8, queen e4 check, king b8, queen e5 check, king a8, queen d5 check. A staircase check pattern. But does it lead anywhere? King b8, queen b5 check, king a8, queen c6 check, king b8, queen d6 check. The white rook is too far away to help out king a8. We have a staircase, but now we have a reverse staircase. And it didn't lead anywhere. Queen d5 check, king b8, check, 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 check. And after... Going up the staircase, down the staircase, Carlson decided there was no way to make progress and a draw was agreed. What a fight. Carlson was winning, but Nakamura defended so well in this game. If you think you've got a little bit better at chess, having watched this show, then like the video and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Make sure you hit that bell, then YouTube will let you know when I release a new video.